Hey everyone, Kevin here. Over the last week or so, I've talked a lot about ASIC miners and GPU miners. All these discussions have came around because of the release of the Bitmain Z9 Mini. But this isn't something new. This year alone, we've seen Bitmain release an 8hash and a Kryptonite miner. So that's for Ethereum, base coins, and Monero. Um, and we've seen a lot of these discussions uh, around what developers need to do. Will they, you know, will they keep the coin on the same algorithm? Will they fork? Will they do something else to try and tackle ASIC miners? I came across a really good article from David Vorick. He's the lead developer of, I believe you say Sia or Sia. Um, this is a very good article. Now, it's a long article, so I'm not going to sit and read the whole thing, but I just want to kind of briefly touch upon some of the things he mentions at the start of the article. I'll link to the article and you can read it in full. Um, you can see here at the start here, he talks about, um, he's a lead developer of SIA, uh, a blockchain based on the cloud storage platform. Um, and I had, I actually had the website up there a second ago. Um, I'll just bring it back up. Uh, so this is SIA, this is the, the coin that he's in, uh, he's in charge of, that he develops for. Now he says that a year ago, himself and some members of the SIA team started the Obelisk, a cryptocurrency ASIC manufacturing company. Our first ASICs are going to ship in about eight weeks. And our journey with Obelisk has given us a lot of insight into the world of cryptocurrency mining. One of the reasons we started Obelisk was because we felt that the coin developers in general had a very poor view into the mining world, and the best way to understand this would be to get our hands dirty and bring a miner to the market. Since starting Obelisk, we've started to learn a lot about the mining space is relevant to, uh, to GPUs, to ASICs, to FPGAs, to ASIC resistance, mining farms, electricity, and a whole host of other subjects that coin developers should be more aware of. We're able to share everything that we know, that we've built together information, a set of key topics that I think will be helpful to cryptocurrency designers and other members of the cryptocurrency community. So that's the introduction and it kind of summarizes what he's going to talk about. Basically, he's been developing these uh, ASIC mining machines for a year and he, he discusses all the points around it. Now, what they're doing here is something that I'm seeing. I think this is how the market is going to go as far as coins developing their own ASIC miners. This actually makes a lot of sense. Why shouldn't the developers of coins develop their own ASIC mining machines rather than letting other companies do it? Uh, I came across something in the, in the Zcash forums as well. They talked about the is it Ion or Aeon, uh, the Aeon network, this company here, this project. Um, they partnered with a, a chip company, Epic Blockchain, to develop mining hardware. Uses the Equihash uh, proof of work but the custom parameters of 2109 instead of 209. So they're taking, um, they're using Equihash, but they're working with a company to release their own, um, their own mining product, their own, um, their own miner. Uh, I think this is interesting because I think if you think about it, you know, this kind of back and forth between coins and Bitmain, it makes sense that developers take control and they develop something themselves. And, it means that they can control exactly how things develop in the future. Um, it gives them more control over everything. If you think about it, it's kind of like the way that Apple does it with their operating system. They tie the software and the hardware so closely together. Um, well, not so much now. They use Intel chips, but that was always what they did. They they tied their operating system to the, the hardware uh, and they didn't make it general purpose. It was, you know, uh, very specific. Very specific. Ugh, if I can talk. Uh, so if I jump back to the article here, there's a few things he, he points out at the start that I think is really good. So he talks about ASIC resistance, um, um, general pur purpose computational devices like G CPUs, GPUs, and even DRAM. Um, they make substantial compromises to their true potential in order to be useful for general computation. So they're a master of many things, uh, or jack of all trades, sorry, but a master of none. Um, but he talks about here as well, if I go down, there's a part where he talks about, um, I think it's the next section maybe. Yeah, so if you, um, a lot of people believe that computing is broken into three cat uh, categories, CPU, GPU, ASIC. Well, those are the categories that are generally visible to the public. In the chip world, there's really only one type of chip, an ASIC. Internally, NVIDIA, Intel, and other companies refer to the products as ASICs. The categories, as, as known to the public, are really a statement about how flexible the ASIC is. I like to use a 1 to 10 scale to measure flexibility. At one side, 1 will put an Intel CPU. On the other side, a 10 will put a Bitcoin ASIC. Designers have the ability to create chips that fall anywhere on this scale. As you move from 1 to 10, you lose substantial flexibility. 
but gain substantial performance. You can also decrease the amount of design and development effort required as you sacrifice flexibility. On this scale, a GPU is a two. So what he's saying there is that, you know, GPUs can do, um, you know, lots of computational things and all that, but like my GPU, I use it, f I can use it for gaming, I can use it for video editing, I can use it for cryptocurrency mining, I can use it for a host of different things. But if I had to make it more specific, then it could be, you know, maybe higher up in the scale, like a five or a six or even a 10. It could do mining much, much better, but perhaps it then couldn't do video editing. It couldn't do um, gaming. And, you know, this is what NVIDIA are doing with their GPUs. They're making them an all-in-one type solution, whereas the ASIC mining machines are very specific. They've got one one task to do, and they do it very, very well, and everything else kind of, um, well, kind of gets left behind. So it, they talk, it talks about this in the article, but then... I'll let you guys read it. I don't want to bore you too much, but it does talk about uh, Monero, uh, other secrets about ASICs and all that. It goes into um, the whole system with manufacturers as well, just the whole manufacturing process as far as developing things and getting them to the market. Uh, in this section, he's talking about basically the profits. Um, so using Sire as an exam example, we estimate it cost Bitmain less than 10 million to bring the A3 to the market. Within eight minutes of announcing the A3, Bitmain had already made more than $20 million in sales. Um, and then they spent ten million dollars designing, manufacturing, right? Um, not to mention Bitmain are obviously mining things before they release them. So um, here he talks about the block reward. This is something else I think is interesting, where he talks about Bitmain know the hash rate. They know what the the the, the full block reward is. Like he says, Saya has a monthly block uh, block reward of ten million dollars, and a batch of miners is expected to have a shelf life of one hundred twenty million dollars. He talks about how basically Bitmain release products knowing that the the products are never going to basically make what they sell it as. You know, they know that because they're selling a certain number of uh, miners, they know what the hash rate will be, they know what the block reward is, and they know that, you know, they might advertise and say, you know, you get 10,000 souls or you get whatever, but they know that by the time it gets to the market and everyone's got the product, it's going to drop significantly because everyone's mining the same thing. Um, so it's a very, 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 very good article. I can't touch upon everything that he um, that he actually covers here. But I'll link to the article. You can see he's talking about mining farms there. Um, and he talks about Bitmain being very impressive how they dominate the market. And then he's got a conclusion at the end. Um, I, I do encourage you guys to read this article. I've only touched upon some of the things that he, he talks about. But what kind of yeah, came out to me is just... You know, the whole idea of ASIC miners and GPUs. And I like the fact that developers are thinking about developing their own ASIC mining products. Now, I'd like to see this more often. I think it makes sense when you think about it. Um, because if developers always react to what Bitmain do or what other ASIC mining companies do, they're always going to be behind it. So it's a game of cat, cat and mouse, but they're, you know, they're playing the mouse at this point because they are, they're reacting to what happens in the market rather than dictating what happens, uh, what happens in the market. So long term, you know, this isn't for everyone. Obviously, it takes a lot of work, a lot of investment. But it'd be great to see more coins, you know, putting in the work and uh, to actually release their own, excuse me, to release their own ASIC mining machine. They can control the parameters. They can control what it can do and what it can't do. And they can start dominating the market before Bitmain or any other ASIC mining uh, company even has a chance to get, a, you know, um, any kind of share of the market. Very, very interesting to see. Um, I'm going to, I'll, I'll pay attention to see, I'll try and keep tabs on this and I'll see what happens with Sire with the new ASIC mining machines. But I think we're going to see more of this, guys. I really do think we're going to see more of this. And in many ways, I do think it, um, you know, the fact that they're doing this, they're taking control of their coin back away from other companies. But as they do point out in this, uh, in this article, you know, they talk about how effective Bitmain are at what they do. They really are effective. From a business point of view, they've got the market sewn up and they know how to do it. They know how to sell. They know how to develop products and get them to market and, and make a profit from it. So they are, you know, a few steps ahead without a doubt. But it'd be very interesting if we see some more coins taking the leap and following uh, Sire's lead and, and doing something similar to this. Perhaps not on the scale that they're doing it, but we'll see. So I will link to this article. Please do read it, guys. It's a long article, but... Um, very, very interesting, very informative. And if, you, if you're interested in the whole, you know, Bitmain 
GPU mining, ASIC mining thing. Um, I think you'll enjoy reading it. So thanks for watching, guys. Please do leave a comment and I'll speak. Um, I won't speak properly. <laughs> I'll speak to you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.